Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TC Talk Back today with another video. And in today's video, we're going to be doing the classic tier list video. We're going to talk about some of the meta implications for Icelander leaving as we have the Realm Rumble this weekend. And so I want to talk about that, kind of talk about where I think some decks are going to be positioned at least early on before we get into the heavy hitters meta. Because we're kind of in a weird spot right now where people can kind of test decks because there's nothing crazy on the line other than obviously like prizing and money. But as far as like the major circuit events, there's no callings, no crazy stuff. So the Realm Rumble, we have the Battle Harden next week weekend in Orlando. So that'll be like the first like really big event that I think we're going to look at. But I want to kind of talk about my thoughts, get your thoughts as a community and just have some fun with it. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoy your stay. Feel free to check out my other content. We're doing a really good job trying to close up the year here strong with a bunch of different content that you can expect this upcoming month. December, I already have a video a day planned every day until like December 18th right now. So we're going to be doing some fun stuff. If you're a long-standing supporter, thank you so much as always. Feel free to check out my other videos. Um, also, I just posted a video yesterday. So if you're watching this and you haven't watched yesterday's video, go watch that after this if you want uh i just did like a channel update for the year as far as like what i'm planning on doing next year and i would love your feedback on that so if you have time definitely go check that out but we'll get right into it so we have the realm rumble this weekend and we have the battle hardened orlando next weekend and i think that these first two events are going to be kind of fun yes there's prizes on the line there's money on the line but also it's really truly the wild wild west when it comes to meta because we're coming off the back of Worlds. We're 5-1. So I do expect aggro and ninja to be very prevalent. I think that's going to be an obvious, right? But I do think people... This is kind of a time to test decks, right? This is time to maybe even play a deck that you normally wouldn't play that you think is fun and has a chance to maybe, you know, like spike the meta, things people aren't expecting, which we'll talk about here in a second. And so I could see some like heavy, like top level players like trying out. We'll talk about them, like Bolton uh, might be an interesting one to try out or Kano. I think like those kind of rogue decks, this is going to be like the rogue time frame, I think. Um, or you might just see people go really heavy in aggro with Icelander being gone. Going to see a lot of crazy games. But yeah, we'll get right into it. So I have five different sections here. I have decks that beat which in my opinion is, is aggro. Aggro is going to be the name of the game in this meta. Um, we have counter aggro decks or count, counter decks to the like decks to beat. We have the field. Then we have some rogue picks. And then finally playing for passion. These are decks that aren't very well positioned, at least right now. It, that maybe with a highly skilled pilot could like have a run. But really, you're not picking these decks because you're trying to counter something specifically or it's a deck to beat. Really, it's, it's a deck that's really hard to play in today's meta. So... The first one we'll get into, and I hate to say this, is my my good friend Arachne. I think Arachne is still in the plane for passion. I do think I've tested it a little bit already this week. Coercive Tendency is going to change that deck. And once Dromai goes, that combined with Coercive Tendency, even if unless Heavy Hairs just gives us something crazy, I think Arachne actually will be a pretty viable pick uh, because Arachne is going to have a card that both speeds the deck up while also playing into the fatigue strategy. So... I could see a Rockney getting a lot better after Curse of Tendency comes out. However, right now, I think the deck's still in the plane for passion. You maybe could put it like at the bottom level of the field category with a very like with a very highly skilled pilot. I think it's like right here. Um, but really not a lot of people are playing this deck, but maybe more people will come to it with the new card and it'll be better. But right now it's at the top of the plane for passion bracket for me. After that, I'm going to go through like each each section. I think it's better to do each section one by one instead of each hero one by one. So the decks to beat I have right now are these four. So I have, I'm making sure I have them all right. Where is it? And then dash. I have them pretty much in this order. Um, probably like that. So honestly, I think Phi is a deck to beat right now. Yes, it's coming off the world uh, when there's going to be a lot of people representing it. A lot of top players are going to move to it, I think. And also, the deck truly is unlocked now with Icelander being gone. A Phi deck can now go to as low as 9 to 12 blues, even like 9 blues, and just really have a ton of threats in deck um, and overall just kind of be unfiltered. It also is a great pick in the Dromai, although that matchup I think is a little bit closer now with Dromai's Tome and Dromai not having to run blues because of Icelander. Dromai can go a lot more aggressive now, but overall I think it's the best deck in the format and it's by far the deck to beat. Honestly, it, you could even put it like in the tier 
you know, S plus category. But for now, we'll do this. The second best deck, I honestly think, is Katsu. You could put Dash up here. And if someone argued Dash to be the second, OG Dash to be the second best deck, I wouldn't uh, argue it. But I think Katsu is really, really good right now because Katsu has a very good five matchup. I think, like, yes, it's a variance-based matchup. Whoever kind of high rolls first wins. And whoever goes second first has a really second has a really good uh, advantage. However, all things equal, without you know both heroes high rolling, if they're both just drawing kind of the same, I think Katsu has a better is better into the five matchup. So that's just my opinion. Katsu has a lot of flexibility too. It the the deck actually blocks very well. People haven't really talked about it. The Bonds of Ancestry version of Katsu blocks so much better than the old version because. Prior to Bonds of Ancestry, you had stuff like Leg Tap, Head Jab, when people ran it. Uh, you had a lot of two blocks, right? In this deck, like you have a lot of three blocks because you have usually six Whelming Gust Waves. Uh, Descendant Gust Wave only blocks for two, but Flick Flack is naturally in a lot of main boards. Um, you have uh, all the Bonds of Ancestry's block three, right? It's just a really kind of flexible deck in terms of blocks, but it also is able to push damage. And so I have it at second right now, but again, you could put Dash at second as well. I think these two are interchangeable. I think Dash has a really flexible game plan. She can go into the he heavy boost uh, package now uh, against Jeremiah, or she can go into like the slap dash tree frog build that we saw at Worlds do really well and get top eight. So I think both these decks are role position. And finally, Dash IO. I think Dash IO comes into this like aggro meta doing really well. I think uh, Pilot could run Dash IO into Fi and Katsu and just say, like, all right, I'll just race you down with boom grenades. Um, we're going to let this matchup go down to variants and see who wins type thing. So these are the four decks. I think, yes, you could argue put Dromai and Bravo up there, but personally, I think they're both a little bit weird right now, and it's going to be a hot take for me, but we'll talk about that when we get there. When it comes to the counter decks to beat, like, how do you counter these four decks? I think right now it's Azalea and Bravo. I think they have the two best chances to do it. I think Azalea is the best uh, counter deck when it comes to like these four specifically. She does very well in Akatsu and Fi if she can draw her good turns and doesn't you know fall to her own variant sometimes. But really, she has so much disruption with Sleep Dart, uh, with Thread in the Ledger, Remorseless, right? Like, and the good thing about Azalea, especially with Icelander leaving the format, is she can kind of like set up her cyborg a little bit more toolboxy, right? She can run hamstring shot if she wanted to, right? Into Fi and stuff like that. I'm not saying you would or wouldn't, but she can run, you know, sleep dart in the side. She even in the Bravo now, she can run fatigue shot in the side. Like she can really toolbox herself to the meta and be very strong. So I think she's like the top counter pick deck right now. And then followed by Bravo. People are not talking about how how much Icelander leaving helps Bravo. And I'm not even a Bravo player and I can see that. Like Bravo is able to just truly tune his deck to what the meta is now and the meta being aggro he can run stuff like crush the weak which just turns off a five turn like you have to respect that card the second you see it on five uh he can run boulder drop a lot easier now uh and i think boulder drops gonna be very good for him he can run stuff like cranial crush even like i'm not even talking about starstruck like starstruck spinal crush and crippling crush are the obvious ones but Stuff like Crush the Weak, Cranial Crush, Spinal Crush, Debilitate, like all these stuff that just slows down these aggro decks, I think Bravo can do really well. And he can go back to being a pummel deck if he wants to and just try to out-tempo you. Like Boulder Drop in a pummel is just disgusting. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But I truly do think Bravo has a decent spot in this meta. When it comes to the field, this is where it's going to get probably a little bit hot taker controversially. I have Dremai in the field right now. Yes, are there extremely good Dromai pilots that know how to navigate these aggro matchups and win them? Yes. You know, if you're Mara or even some of the Dromais that we've seen perform very well over multiple tournaments, um, calling Dallas winner and stuff like that, I do think those pilots will still do well. But Dromai is going to be extremely difficult to pilot in this meta. Um, you know, Bravo matchup is very difficult and it's favored one way or another, depending on who you talk to. Uh, and it's a very, you know, in skill intensive matchup and then both of these decks i am still in the camp of it's close katsu and dromai are pretty much 50 50 in my opinion if you're on an empress fast build and Fi is just slightly unfavored for dromai like 55 45 in my opinion maybe 60 40 if it's really good five pilot but um she's gonna have to navigate through all that and dash can um 
do really well into her, and then Dash Io can try to race her down. She just has a lot of like not unwinnable matchups or super unfavored matchups, but matchups that take a very high skill skill ceiling to do well into. And because of that, I don't think she's well positioned right now. Um, personally, that's just my opinion. When it comes to other field decks, I'm gonna put them in here. Reinar is a good one. I wanted to put Reinar and Rogue, uh, but with all the aggro. You have to be a really good Reinar player to win that consistently. Um, Dex showed that they can do it uh, very well into aggro, but really you have to run like this tank Reinar build in order to be consistent over a big tournament, in my opinion, and that build's very skill intensive. Reinar can do well, but if they're playing ninjas every single round, I just don't think they're going to keep the consistency up enough in order to take those matchups. So because they have Reinar in the field, Uziri is still in the field. I think Uziri actually goes up with Icelander going away. Um, she does pretty well into the aggro matchups. Like she does really well in the Katsu. It's a very, I think the matchup's 50 50 personally, but I've played the matchup so much. Um, Fi is a little bit harder. She has to really do really well and kind of, you know, pick her spots well into that matchup. But she does pretty well into most all of these decks. The only kind of rough one sometimes can be Bravo and Jeremiah. But she can win the Bravo matchup, and Jeremiah is very difficult, not really favored at all. But on the red line list, you, this is a winnable matchup. We've seen it at the highest level. So I actually think like she got rid of one of her worst matchups. Like Icelander arguably was her second worst matchup uh, behind Jermai, and they got rid of it. So and in aggro, she can do really well if she hits her disruption. So I think she actually went up, to be honest with you. Um, the next couple of ones I have, and I've changed one. I originally had Bolton in the field, but I'm going to put him in Rogue after this. But my next three fields are Levia, uh, Dorinthia, and I'm making sure I'm right over here, and Max. All three of these have a really good chance. I think they all can do really well. Um, and overall, just, you know, good pilots will, will have some runs with them. But overall, I just don't think they quite have the sauce that these top, top ones have. And then we have the... I'm going to skip Rogue. We'll go to Playing for Passion. The other three Playing for Passion decks right now, in my opinion, are uh, Tech Lavosin, Vincent, which have the young version still in here. I need to change that. Uh, and Prism, which also have the young version. In. But these these four decks, I think all these are Playing for Passion. Prism specifically, though, similar to Arachne, once certain decks leave the format, particularly Jeremiah, once Jeremiah leaves the format, both of these decks right here go up. Like, they both have very high skill ceilings, very uh, good ways to deal with aggro. Prism can just go full Herald build and really just smack him in the face with low-cost Heralds. Um, she can actually play very similar to the way old Prism did, just not quite as broken. Uh, and Arachne is going to do really well into aggro as well. So both of these decks, I think, are kind of like your be-on-the-lookout decks later in the format once Jeremiah goes. But Jeremiah has got to go before these two can be very viable. Um, and then finally, the Rogue category. I have three rogue decks, really four now. I had three rogue decks, but originally my three rogue decks were Kano, Riptide, and Viscerai. Um, and I'm adding in Bolton. So Kano's a big one. A lot of people are going to be disrespecting AB with Icelander leaving the format. You might have a couple smart people that just run AB2, AB3, but really a lot of people I think are just going to be like, you know, I'm going to leave it in the heart of the cards and hope to God I don't get matched up with Kano. There are some matchups that had they have natural good AB in their kit. Um, Matt, people like Reinar... Um, has really good AB naturally. Uh, Ranger has really, well, Azalea specifically has AB2 naturally in her kit, stuff like that. But other decks like Katsu and Fi, you have to take up like a decent amount of sideboard slots to have good AB into him. And if people run Oasis in the side. So I could see Kano spiking an event. Riptide does pretty well in the aggro. If the, if the event is like heavy Fi Katsu, I could see Riptide doing really well because he does really well in those matchups. Typically, he can race them down. He hits them with these crazy on-hit effects, uh, and he does really well. It's kind of like a variance-based matchup, but something you can do really well. Viscerai, I'm not 100% sold on Viscerai. I still think Viscerai is playing for passion, but I have some been seen some people talking about how you can go back to the Shrill build. A lot of people, honestly, are just running Reaping Blade in this, in this list now. Like They've just taken the same Rosetta list, the Shrill Rosetta list that we're used to seeing, and just put Reaping Blade in it because Reaping Blade is always going to be a one for three. right? So you just lose a little bit of value on the weapon. Some people were trying Nebula Blade, but like on off turns like it's a one power attack that doesn't do anything so and it's easy to block with equipment so people are just running the reaping blade just to always get that one for three after their stereotypical mauve shrill you know weapon play so that's that's why i think that the match the deck's still pretty good and with icelander be gone it really unlocks that deck back to where it, you could used to be and then finally bolton I have Bolton in the field, but the more I think about it, Bolton is truly is a rogue deck. Uh, 
this deck now can swap between Raiden and Sabres, right? It can go combo and it can go Raiden and switch accordingly. I'm not sure which matchup is on both, on either, but I know good Bolton players know how to do that, and this matchup can be scary for the Ninjas. I am totally okay facing a Raiden Bolton any day of the week on Katsu. Sabres Bolton's a little bit different because they block me out, they build their soul, and then they just smack you in the face, and you hope to God you pressure them enough before they can do that. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but Icelander leaving the format really does help this deck. Uh, and I think that this deck is similar to Kano levels when it comes to just spiking an event because it hits the right thing. Still has some issues though in the Dromai, so you don't want to get in that matchup. But if you can avoid Dromai, you're in a good spot. But yeah, this is where I'm at with the list or the, the tier list. I think it's a pretty good, good, uh, position. I'm actually really comfortable with this. Heavy hitters is obviously going to change things, right? So this is just for fun early in this meta in December and a little bit in January before we hit hit uh, spoiler season for heavy hitters. But I do think, like in most formats that are brand new, aggro is going to reign supreme for a little bit, and then you'll start to see some different adaptations. I'd be really interested to see what uh, uh, control decks or like fatigue decks come into play. I think Uziri could go full contract and do really well. Arachne has some play into that. Tank Reinar has some play in that. The Titan's Fist Bravo can do it, right? There's a lot of different decks that we're seeing that can run it. Even like Decimator Dory would be really funny to see if someone just said, you know, I'll try to dodge Dromai and see what happens. Um, but really, really cool uh, meta we're in right now. Yes, it's going to be very aggro-focused, but I think there's some room for some experimentation here in the next two months. But let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you, if you totally disagree with anything on this list, I think we're in a decent spot, though. Uh, and it's pretty clear cut on, um, I think it's clear cut on the, the, the deck to beat is, which is fine. Uh, after that, it's kind of like up for debate on what you think is the next couple of best decks. But if you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. If not me, it's totally fine. Go to our Flesh and Mug creator, leave a like, comment, subscribe on their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game. Um, let me know what else you want to see on the channel coming up in this upcoming year. And I'll see you all next time on TC Talk. Thank you all so much.